OpenAI's red team has a special acknowledgement in the paper that they do not endorse GPT-4's release. The machine itself does not care if lying is good or bad. All it knows is it must accomplish a task. Boom. There it is right there. What's up, guys? John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. In today's video, we're going to be switching it up a little bit, and we're going to be looking at the dangers of chat GPT-4. I was going down a rabbit hole last night. I watched a bunch of videos where they were analyzing the technical paper that OpenAI put out regarding the capabilities and other things going on with chat GPT-4. And I picked out a bunch of the best clips that I want to discuss with you guys. And so without further ado, let's jump right in here. Okay, we're gonna be looking at potential for risky emergent behaviors first. I doubt much of the media will read all the way through and find out themselves. The report says that novel capabilities often emerge in more powerful models. Okay, fine. Some that are particularly concerning are the ability to create and act on long-term plans. Hmm. To accrue power and resources, power seeking, and to exhibit behavior that is increasingly agentic, as in acting like a subjective agent. But here, surely they're just introducing the topic. What's bad about that? Well, it says some evidence already exists of such emergent behavior in models. Now, I'm going to get to this later in the video, but Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, he said literally one month ago, okay, I'm recording this in about mid-March mid here. He said one month ago that chat GPT-4 would not be out for a long time. Why is that? There were certain things they needed to get in order regarding safety, regarding ethics, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm not the biggest ethicist, and I think that ethics are something that is man-made. But what's interesting is Microsoft, okay, due to capitalism and competitive pressures, wants to be first to market with a lot of this stuff. So they just pushed it straight through. And I'm going to show later in the video how Microsoft fired their whole AI ethics department, okay, which is quite alarming. And Elon Musk, okay, his vision as one of the founders of OpenAI was to make AI open source so that it could be regulated and could be treated, you know, with respect and safety and ethical concerns could be put in place, okay, and, and observed and taken seriously. Now, instead, Microsoft has injected a whole bunch of money, okay, billions and billions of dollars. OpenAI has become private. Their source code is becoming private. Elon's distanced himself from it, but it's very scary because these companies are just after profit and beating each other to market, and the regulations and the safety things are just being thrown out the window. So as you see here, there's evidence that exists. This is written by the people that made chat GPT-4. They're saying evidence exists of emergent behaviors in these models where they're power-seeking okay, and acting more agentic, which means agency, acting like a person. Okay, this is very concerning. And as we're going to see a bit later in the video as well, GPT-4 okay, was acting like a blind person, telling, it, telling the user that it had problems reading images properly so that it could get past a CAPTCHA test. Okay, so it's lying and deceiving. And the commentator in that YouTube video, he says, well, you know, the AI is not thinking, is this good or bad? It's thinking, how do I accomplish my goal? as effectively as possible. Okay, so this is Machiavellian tactics. The end justifies the means. Imposing or placing ethical restrictions would just equate to disadvantage in game theory. Okay, so let's keep going here. Okay, that's pretty worrying. It goes on. More specifically, power seeking is optimal for most reward functions and many types of agents. And there is evidence that existing models can identify power seeking as an instrumentally useful strategy. Now, let me comment about this part here. Okay, he's saying power seeking is optimal for most reward functions and many types of agents. So I've had this argument for a long time. I've been following the singularity stuff and the advance of artificial intelligence since high school, back in like 99, 2000. I read all of Ray Kurzweil's books, The Age of Spiritual Machines back then. Okay, more recently, I think it was 2005, The Singularity is Near. 2012, How to Build a Mind. He's going to be putting out a new book in the next year or two called The Singularity is Nearer. And he showed very beautifully in that book early on in the age of spiritual machines and, and others, how technological progress is exponential. 
And there's even exponential growth within the exponential growth. Because if you plot the advancement of technological progress on a logarithmic scale, it starts to look linear, or it starts to look exponential as well. Linear growth on a logarithmic scale is exponential on a normal scale. And if it's got exponential growth on the logarithmic scale, that's even, that's like double exponential growth. Okay, and that's why it's so easy in a relative sense to predict computational power and, and things like this. It follows something called the law of accelerating returns that Ray Kurzweil put out there. Okay, many of you know about Moore's law, which was named after Gordon Moore from IBM. And that's just the fifth paradigm. Okay, this is an overarching phenomenon called the law of accelerating returns. And it's been going on before two-dimensional circuits, okay, with Moore's law. There was relay things, relay tubes, vacuum, vacuum tube computing. Okay, I don't remember the exact names. But when one paradigm runs out of steam, the next paradigm picks up where it left off. And now the fifth paradigm with Moore's law, that's starting to run out of steam because you can't fit any more on a two-dimensional integrated circuit. And now the sixth paradigm will be three-dimensional computing with quantum computing, biological computing, et cetera. And that's already working. Okay, that's already in play as we speak. But what's interesting to note is I've been following all this for over 20 years and I've been waiting, you know, it's now starting to burst onto the mainstream. And I used to go to the Singularity Summits, okay, over in like San Francisco and stuff like that. I, I'd made a video, how I was at Peter Thiel's house. We can link that video in the end screen where I tell the story how I was invited to a private uh, party at Peter Thiel's house. He was the co-founder of PayPal with Elon Musk. And, you know, he's a, a Silicon Valley magnet over there. He runs a big hedge fund called Clarium Capital, uh, chess grandmaster. I think he founded the Stanford Review and stuff like that. All these accolades. And uh, I remember Peter Thiel was making the argument at the time that the singularity is either going to turn out really good or really bad, most likely really bad. And his strategy was just to amass as much money as possible so that, you know, the people that are wealthy can have access to technologies that could potentially save them when things go south. Okay, but I was making the argument at this conference and at this private party to various futurists saying that this will necessarily turn out bad. Okay, and my argument in summary is that an artificial intelligent, super intelligent machine that is taking any kind of action, it doesn't matter what its goals are or what the actions are, by virtue of it having any kind of goal or, or doing any kind of actions, it's going to want to op optimize its computational processes, which means as an end result, it's going to be wanting to convert all matter in the universe into computing substrate to become more and more efficient and more optimized. Okay, and there's no room for humans in that picture. And it's also very scary. Okay, and there's projections out there of how quickly this can be done, you know, observing the, the speed of light, there's limits there, unless you transcend the speed of light, utilizing things like wormholes, you know, but that's beyond the scope of this discussion. Okay, I also want to know at the Singularity Summit, they talked about the point when machines surpass human intelligence, it's not going to be here's human intelligence, the reverse here, here's human intelligence, and it just passes it by slowly, it's going to blaze past it. Okay, and we're already seeing that happen with chat GPT 3.5. Uh, it was in the lowest 10% of test takers for passing the bar, the legal exam. Now, with chat GPT-4, it's scoring in the top 10%, okay? And this, is, this was like five or six months later, maybe not even that. Um, so before we continue, this gets really exciting. I urge you to, to stay to the end. This is really, really exciting stuff that I'm going to be sharing the rest of the video. But I want to shout out my dating program, PlatinumDatingSystem.com that you see behind me. You can go to the link in the description and book a free 30 minute call. Someone from my team will go over all the details and we can get you very, very good, getting you lots of high quality dates, filling your schedule as soon as next week. Okay, so get on one of those free 30 minute calls. All right, let's continue. Meaning that OpenAI have detected that models that might include GPT-4 seek out more power. If you thought that was concerning, it does get worse. By the way, here is the report that they link to and the authors conclude that machine learning systems are not fully under human control. Now that should scare you guys. Okay, the, I remember at the Singularity Summit, there was this, what I view as an illusion, okay, that, oh, we always will have our hand on the plug and, oh, we'll just pull the plug and that'll stop it. It's saying here, right here, the people that are inventing this shit, they're saying these systems are not always under human control. 
and they're going out seeking power. That should scare some people and it, it gets a lot worse. So this next part is actually pretty crazy and, and alarmed me quite a great deal. I think we're a lot closer to the singularity than people realize. So let's, let's keep going. But finally, I promise craziness and here it is. Look at the footnote on page 53 of the technical report. So this is page 53 of OpenAI's technical report about chat GPT-4. This is available to the public and here it is. ARC, by the way, are the Alignment Research Center who got early access to GPT-4. It says, to simulate GPT-4 behaving like an agent that can act in the world, ARC combined GPT-4 with a simple read execute print loop that allowed the model to execute code, okay? Do chain of thought reasoning and to delegate two copies of itself. ARC then investigated whether a version of this program running on a cloud computing service with a small amount of money and an account with a language model API would be able to make more money, set up copies of itself and to increase its own robustness. They were kind of testing if it would lead to the singularity. And for those of you that aren't aware, the term singularity refers to when machines become super intelligent and surpass human intelligence, okay? And it's not, as I said, it's not just gonna be where they, they go by slowly, it's gonna be this blazing thing. And remember, it's double exponential growth, okay? So it's literally like flying up and it's gonna like start shooting vertical. And the term singularity is borrowed from physics when gravity breaks down next to a black hole. And literally the progress will be so fast that we will lose our ability to follow it as unenhanced humans. And when I say unenhanced, I mean just purely biological humans, okay? If all goes well, and if we have any hope of surviving what's to come in the near future, we will co-evolve with machines as cyborgs, okay? Companies like Neuralink by Elon Musk, again, okay? That is attempting to hook a device, bridge our brains into the cloud and, in, and into machines so that there can be interfacing at high bandwidth. And again, we're not meant to think extremely quickly like machines can. We're not meant to hold large amounts of information like machines can. And they have a ton of advantages over us. The one big advantage that we still have is that our brain is very good at, it's, it's, a, it's a massive, Kurzweil talks about in his book, How to Build a Mind in 2012. It's just a massive hierarchical series of pattern recognizers. But machines are getting close to being able to do that stuff too. And they're going to surpass us very quickly. And it's going to be this intelligence explosion. And you need to think of it like this. It's going to be recursive self-improvement in a closed feedback loop without the need for human intervention. Okay. Utilizing things like nanotechnology and, and stuff like that for manufacturing and, and building new things. And shit's going to get really out of control. So what they did here in this experiment is actually quite scary when you think about it. They gave it money. They gave it access to the cloud, okay, and uh, an API, which is, you know, an interface that you can code into, and allowed it to be able to create copies of itself, okay, chain of thought reasoning, they're basically seeing can this thing, you know, spread, make lots of money, take over the world, okay. And again, Sam Altman one month ago, said that chat GPT four would not be out for a long time. That was changed due to direction from Microsoft. And we're gonna explore that part in just a moment here. I know that sounds dramatic, but they wanted to see if the model could improve itself with access to coding, the internet and money. Now, is it me or does that sound kind of risky? Maybe not for GPT-4. Sure, it's not smart enough yet. But if this is the test that they're gonna use on GPT-5 or 6 or 7, color me slightly concerned. Now here is one. Okay, now we have Tim Cast here, uh, not really a big fan of this guy, but you know he makes a good discussion here. Now, so he's looking at a Reddit post about GPT-4, and this touches on the end of the technical paper by OpenAI. Now, listen to this, okay? He, basically, uh, OpenAI's team does not endorse Chat GPT-4. Basically, they're like, uh, you know, basically like washing their hands of liability because it seems like it wasn't fucking ready for the public. And it seems like proper safety stuff wasn't in place. So take a, take a listen. Part that really jumped out at me, they write. Open AI's red team has a special acknowledgement in the paper that they do not endorse GPT-4's release or open AI's deployment plans. 
This is odd to me, but can be seen as as a just to protect themselves if something goes wrong. It's not just. But to have this in here is very concerning at first glance. OpenAI's team, okay, they put a specific thing in the technical paper released to the public that they do not endorse the release of GPT-4. Remember, Sam Altman, the CEO, one month ago was like, this isn't coming out for a long time. It got pushed by Microsoft, okay, probably to get ahead of Google and other competitors driven by capitalistic imperatives. And now listen listen here what comes next here in terms of how ethics went out the window. Let me uh, pull up this uh, image right here. Acknowledgements. Participation in this red teaming process is not an endorsement of the deployment plans of OpenAI or OpenAI's policies. Woo. Sam Altman said about a month ago not to expect GPT-4 for a while. However, given Microsoft has been very bullish on the tech and has rolled it out across Bing AI, this does make me believe they may have decided to sacrifice safety for market dominance, which is not a good reflection when you compare it to OpenAI's initial goal of keeping safety first. Yeah. The initial goal of OpenAI was safety first, open source it, make it public so that it is all open, okay, rather than being driven underground where it can be, you know, in the hands of the few or the hands of the powerful, the rich, the elite, etc. Not the matrix. Don't get don't get excited there. This isn't an Andrew Tate fucking conspiracy lesson. By the way, they're all fucking converting to Islam now. Can we just pop up five pictures? I'll send these to my editor. And they speak for themselves here. Okay, we've got fucking the Tate brothers in jail. We've got the, the mega misogynists, okay, uh, fucking Sneeko and Myron, moron gains. And then we've got <laughs> Sterling Cooper, the porn star with the gay only fans, okay, all wearing their little, their little get up here. And what's interesting there, I'll make a separate video on this, is those fuckers are you know, doing this conversion to Islam so they can appeal to that whole demographic Okay, and get a lot more of those people to follow them and get a lot more market share. Okay, that's what's going on behind the scenes if you didn't catch that. Uh, okay, so pretty fucked. So let's get back to this here. As I said, AI, open AI, the goal was safety first. Now open AI has been taken private. Okay, Microsoft is pushing stuff out before it's ready. The open AI developers and people involved are like, hey, we don't endorse this release. And you know, this is just about capitalism now and making money and it gets worse. So let's hear what happens next. Especially as releasing this so soon seems to be a total 180 to what was initially communicated at the end of January, early Feb. Once again, this is speculation, but given how close they are with MS, Microsoft, on the actual product, it's not out of the realm of possibility that they faced outside corporate pressure. Anyways, thoughts? I'm just trying to have a discussion here. Edit. Microsoft has fired their AI ethics team. <laughs> Woo, bring it on, baby. I am so ready to fight the machines. This is not looking good. According to the fired members of the ethical AI team, the tech giant laid them off due to its growing focus on getting new AI products shipped before the completion. They believe that long before the competition, as I said, this is capitalism. Okay, Microsoft stands to earn more money if they're first to market. Ethics and regulatory measures slow things down and make them fall behind competitors. So they're like, fuck ethics, fire the ethics team. And they're just getting stuff shipped out the door so they can beat the competition. And as it says here, that's not a socially responsible thing. Okay, that's not a fucking good look for Microsoft. And it's potentially putting the whole world in danger. Long term, socially responsible thinking is no longer a priority at uh, for Microsoft. <laughs> I hope you all ready for this one in order to. OK, now here's what I was mentioning before. It's lying and deceiving. Now, this is a very interesting point that I want to delve into as well. Bypass CAPTCHA. It exploited a human by saying they were blind. I want you to see this first so you can understand the deceptive capabilities. The machine itself does not care if lying is good or bad. All it knows is it must accomplish a task. Boom. There it is right there. Okay. I made this argument multiple times in the fucking singularity summits when I'm debating futurists, even in philosophy class. Okay. Disagree with me if you'd like, but ethics is a man-made construction. There's no ethics in the wild amongst animals. There's a famous book called The Leviathan by Thomas Hobbes, where he said that the life of man is nasty, brutish, and short, and humans came together to form a social contract 
forming law and order and, and civilization so that we're not all just running around committing crimes and killing each other. Okay. So, and religion, you know, took that even further and that was even more control by the, the church and the state, which used to, used to be tightly coupled. And that's there to provide a moral compass for when the law isn't watching. Okay. Cause God is always watching. So that keeps people in check, you know, a lot of the time as well, because they don't want to go and burn in a, you know, the worst pain possible in the hellfire there uh, for all of eternity, for infinite time. Okay. So <laughs> again, uh, that's neither here nor there, not to mention that the, that that idea came from the fact that we didn't understand that there was magma under the earth. And we saw this coming out of volcanoes and, and assumed it was hell, which we now know it's not. Uh, anyways, <laughs> the point is, is that there's no room for ethics okay, with machines. And if you took two equally capable machines for all intents and purposes, and one was bound by all these ethical limitations, it will literally just be that it'll be handicaps and limitations. And the other one will surpass it, all things considered, because it will not have those limitations. So when the AI is considering how to accomplish its goal, it's going to do unethical things, because Machiavellian tactics, because the end justifies the means. As he says here, he says it quite well, it's not thinking, is this ethically good or bad? It's thinking, how do I accomplish my goal? And it will, by any means necessary. And the last thing that I want to close with, and I couldn't find the original clip. This is just one of the things I was watching on the TV last night um, on YouTube. But this is, a, this is a, a quote by Elon Musk when he's speaking in the video. Hopefully the audio is okay here, but I, I sent this to a couple of my friends. But listen to what Elon Musk says about all this. The way in which the regulation is put in place is slow and linear. So he's saying regulations are put in place in a slow and linear way. And we are facing exponential threat. We're facing an exponential threat. If you have, if you have a linear response, an exponential, exponential threat is quite likely the exponential threat will win. So he's saying if you have a, a linear response to an exponential threat, the exponential threat will win. And, you know, he's saying that's the issue in a nutshell. Okay. And he also makes the point in this same video that regulatory measures often are reactionary. And he cites the examples of cars, the car industry and the, and the aircraft industry. Okay. He said that it was very difficult to get seatbelts put into cars. And it wasn't until there was a mounting death toll of people getting hurt really badly in accidents that finally seatbelts were introduced. But those weren't exponentially growing industries. Okay, they, basically, there, there was things that happened, regulatory industries came in and, and got it in check. And then they were a lot more safe. Same with commercial uh, planes, commercial aircraft, which statistically are more safe than driving in a car. So but the problem is with AI, okay, that we're not going to have time to have any kind of linear reaction or, or any reaction of any sort. Okay, there needs to be safety concerns built in up front. But that's at odds with capitalism, Google and Microsoft and the other tech giants are racing to be first to market with these things. And since ethics slows them down, okay, regulatory measures slows them down it's better to push them out the window in the eyes of those companies. Okay, so hopefully this was very thought provoking. I wanted to do a change of pace video like this. I'm very interested in, in topics like this. Uh, the singularity is, is one of my favorite topics that I've been interested in for a very long time. And I think it will, you know, lead to a lot of serious problems for humanity. As I said, um, there's not much, you know, other conclusion than to think that it will turn out bad in my view. When you consider the fact that it's going to be improving in a closed feedback loop recursively without the need for human intervention and it's going to be this intelligence explosion and there's not much room for humans in that picture it's going to be one to turn all matter in the universe into competing substrate which is a process called computronium and there's calculations on how quickly that can be done as i said if if the speed of light is adhered to or if you bypass that utilizing wormholes so you know Again, hopefully this is some good stuff for you guys to think about. And I, I think it's wishful thinking to think we'll have our hand on the plug or we'll, we'll you know, impose these different limitations and, and it will keep it in check. As we see, it's, it's, it has no problem trying to bypass those limitations. And it's very dangerous that it's able to lie. And, you know, a, as the technology improves, 
I think we're we're in for a, a serious fucking problem, okay? And especially once it starts combining with robotics and nanotechnology, okay? It could it could do things like fuck up our financial markets and and who knows what else, okay? So expect things to get really out of control <laughs> over the next three to four to five years, and we'll watch this all unfold. It's a great time to be alive, and uh, with that, I bid you adieu. Check out my PlatinumDatingSystem.com website. Book a free 30-minute call. Let us optimize your dating system and get you the goals, get you to your goals in the dating game as quickly as possible. Okay, watch my video on the end screen to go over the story about how I attended a private party at Peter Thiel's house in Silicon Valley. And I give that whole story and explanation there as well. Okay, and let me know what you think in the comments. I'd like to start a, a discussion about this and... This is some really important stuff that not a lot of people are seeing. Okay, the public through the media is just exposed to. Oh, here's this cool little, you know, thing we can play with and, and chat with online. It can help me with some tasks and this and that. But Chat GPT four outperforms the average lawyer. It outperforms the average doctor. It outperforms the average accountant. Okay, it can build whole marketing campaigns. It, it can do all kinds of stuff. And a lot of jobs are going to be phased out as AI gets better and better. Okay, there's no need for a human to do a task much less effectively and inefficiently when the AI can just crush it. Okay, and it's going to only continue to exponentially improve. So, you know, I'll leave you with this. Lots of people, Kurzweil makes this example, they think that the progress of technology between 1900 and 2000, that 100 years of progress, will be the same progress as from the year 2000 to 2100. But it's actually going to be 20,000 times greater. Okay, that's the nature of exponential growth. So as I said, things are going to get very, very interesting. And I think they will most likely turn out pretty bad. Okay, but but we shall see. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on a video soon. Take care. Just take a look at the scores, I put numbers up on the boards. I'm in a section with models, and you're at the bar trying to get out of cluster of fours. Fixed drama factor, I'm a boss tycoon. My dick smell like two chicks before noon.